Good afternoon. I'm Molly John, and it is my, my pleasure and privilege to have the opportunity to kick off this afternoon's session focused on food security, nutritional security, and health at this very important conference, um, the first of its type, of course, in Israel. Um, and it is also my regret not to be with you physically, but certainly to um, be with you um, in, in mind, if not body, to share with you my thoughts on this critically important topic. Um, it's, it's a special honor for me to um, play this role at a conference in the country of Israel focused at such an important topic at such an important time. Um, many of you in the audience may know I have long and strong collaborative ties in Israeli science and uh, tr offer tremendous support for the commitment looking forward um, that the country of Israel is offering to the world as we face these very daunting challenges that lie um, ahead and the, um, and the serious challenges we have in the present day. So with that, I'd like to shift to the next slide and, um, and say again that while I'm not with you there today in, in person, um, I hope these remarks will be useful to those of you there framing this topic out um, with respect to the Israeli science and social science establishment and planetary need. Um, these are topics that um, have become central, really, to my work, although my beginning is, um, is as a productivity-focused uh, plant scientist. And, um, and we are now in facing um, daunting challenges, summarized on the next slide. Um, 35% of the Earth's ice-free land surface is devoted to agriculture and providing food and the other critical agricultural outputs, feed, fiber, and now fuel for nearly for 7 billion people on the planet now, looking forward to perhaps 2 or more billion people uh, joining us in the next decades, clearly has had um, catastrophic effects on ecosystems and we are falling short, significantly short, of our ideals for sufficiency for humankind. The next slide um, shows that looking forward in the 21st century, the goal um, must be food and nutritional security, and more than that, diet-related health. Um, so this slide summarizes to, um, to recognized conditions uh, that have to do with food and nutritional security. Um, these numbers may be a little bit out of date, um, but the general order of magnitude is correct, with um, nearly a billion um, experiencing significant deficiencies in food, and perhaps more than a billion um, suffering the consequences of overconsumption clearly a, a sharp focus on nutrition, agriculture, and health is warranted. And new methods and new approaches, new framing of these challenges is critically important. I'd like to offer um, an additional perspective, which is essential as we look forward, which beyond the overconsumption and underconsumption issues are, is the very large um, consideration of, nutri of nutrient deficiency and emphasizing the importance of, of the term nutritional security. Um, there will be many examples, I'm sure, in the conference and, um, and of course, every day about the consequences of these, um, of these nutritional deficiencies with respect to human health. And so if we add these numbers up, um, with respect to the human pop the global human population and the nutritional status, you see a very significant shortfall despite our remarkable successes in a 20th century paradigm focusing on agriculture and agricultural productivity. And that is a very, very important point. Um, in fact, our focus on productivity and its linkages with the scenario in front of us focused on diet are really important and really important to maintain. But the next slide um, shows that actually our strategies, even for maintaining our yield um, gains, will be challenged looking ahead. This slide shows um, 
an overall trend. The blue line signals um, signals uh, that the the increases in land under production that account um, for um, increases in agricultural productivity. The blue line signals um, crop productivity itself, um, and you can see. We, we have about a threefold increase, slightly less, in crop productivity, um, more than that in meat production, and an increasing area of land under, under cultivation um, globally. We know, though, in the future, you can see that blue line is leveling off, and we know that this strategy will not be available to us looking forward without continued and probably enhanced consequences with respect to the stability of the planetary ecosystem. The next slide shows another trend. This is a slide provided to me by Ken Kassman, um, who chairs the, the Science Committee of the, of the International Agricultural Research System. Ken and his team and others across the world have repeatedly noticed, particularly in cereal ag agroecosystems, a yield plateau or yield plateaus signaling the possibility that the rate of gain with respect to yield increases is slowing and in some cases flattening entirely. So this slide shows three major global cereals, rice on the left, wheat in the center, and maize, um, illustrating the um, evidence that suggests these yield plateaus are occurring in a host of different and critically important agroecosystems with respect to food sufficiency. So this trend is a very important trend because of the connections between productivity, food, and nutritional security. Exacerbating these dynamics, and of course this is occurring for a host of reasons in a host of ecosystems, is the, the looming, um, and it's not just looming, the present reality of, of um, a shifting climate. In the U.S., we understand that we are likely about 50 years into significant shifts affecting agriculture, um, shifts that have moved in my home region our growing season a month um, and lengthened our growing season a month in the upper Midwest U.S., and shifts that are taking us to really uncharted territory. So um, this slide shows a thousand-year perspective um, one of many illustrations of the challenges of, of um, the climate change will present, highlighting the fact that whatever our conditions looking forward, every objective evidence suggests that we are going very new places with various implications of very serious types and large magnitudes on agricultural ecosystems, therefore on productivity and human health. The next slide is an attempt to put some um, boundaries around that uncertainty, again emphasizing for this talk the fact that our traditional approaches to food and nutritional security, which have been primarily yield focused and which emphasize the staple cereals, will be extremely challenged um, looking forward. Uh, this slide shows the ranges of possible um, outcomes on the right-hand side, um, under various climate scenarios, all of them reasonable, um, and all of them signal that we will see um, increases in temperature overall, particularly in temperature affecting um, crops. In other words, high nighttime temperatures can have an, um, a disproportionate effect on crop yield. And um, the frequency and distribution of extreme weather will also create tremendous challenges for agriculture with profound implications for food security. So the next slide is an attempt that, um, that I present to reorient our thinking about the ways in which particularly research investments may be deployed to these challenges, acknowledging these linkages and the urgency of the situation. In brief, we, we know we have a growing global population in a fundamentally closed system. We understand that um, the links between local and global food security, health, that is personal health and population health, the condition of poverty, which is an, a very effective proxy 
for food and nutritional security and health, as well as ecosystem uh, stability and quality. And social and political stability are inextricably linked. We also understand an increased demand per capita for food, water, fiber, and energy, all of which pull, all of which are valued services which come from landscapes that are taxed in their present form to provide for our needs. We understand now that any dialogue in, focused on, the, on ag productive agroecosystems is a dialogue that's fundamentally about identifying trade-offs and managing them, as well as catching synergies between multiple um, categories of demands on agro agroecosystems, and uh, a strong need for more accurate planetary, local to planetary accounting. So the next slide depicts what researchers must do differently, in my opinion, towards food and nutritional security and improved health, personal and population, facing these challenges. In short, we need to realize that we are always, under any circumstance, in any frame, managing systems for multiple outputs, that's the traditional agricultural frame, and outcomes, that is food security, nutritional security, health parameters through the human life cycle across time and across space. And that we are managing these systems as a function of inputs and dynamic conditions. This is a fundamentally different challenge from the traditional yield-based, um, unconstrained challenge that agricultural scientists have risen to for the last, risen to and risen to very successfully for the last 100 years. This is a reframing that was so significant that in a parallel field in which I've worked genomics, we literally had to invent a new, a new zone of inquiry with fundamentally different methods and targets called systems biology. And so what I'm going to emphasize for the rest of this talk is that this um, recognition of the need to work in systems focused, among other things, on human health and health outcomes, the linkages between health food and diet and agriculture will require fundamentally new ways of framing our work, delivering our outputs, and tracking our impacts. So I'm going to present several obvious but critically important precepts uh, looking forward. Gains in agricultural productivity do not assure food security. This does not mean that we should come off in any way the, our focus on productivity in agricultural ecosystems. But it does mean that we must admit that we have done the experiment about the sufficiency of that approach for food security. And we understand now that, it, that in and of itself, productivity-focused research will not per se achieve outcomes, especially in human dimensions connected to health and livelihoods, that we uh, hold ourselves to looking forward. Gains in yield potential do not necessarily result in yield gains in the field. And an extremely important zone of inquiry, active and complicated, um, very interesting and important in this century, are going to be focused on closing the yield gap in all types of agroecosystems, staples, as well as looking at diverse um, nutritional and uh, diverse agroecosystems and their ability to provide nutritional security. Food sufficiency, a condition we've enjoyed on the planet, at least theoretically since 2007, does not assure food nutrition, food access, nutritional security, or diet-related health. The last two are, are precepts that have been especially important to me as, as a researcher focused in productivity with commitment to human dimensions. Agricultural interventions only work when there's a crop. So, under conditions of climate change where we may not have crops, no productivity-focused research will be relevant and, uh, or, or, um, or may be relevant um, or may be relevant or it'll be difficult to deliver those benefits where weak governance or, um, or other challenged human systems impede delivery of, of global yields. And finally, a focus on regenerative and restorative agricultural practices per se must be the direct focus of systematic research at various scales. The degradation that has occurred through the 20th century focusing on unconstrained yield maxima must be shifted if we are to meet our needs looking forward. I want to tell a brief parable that was very important to me as a, as a scientist working in this space.
next slide shows um, the challenge itself, which was in West Africa. This is a tomato field um, in the upper right-hand corner of the slide in West Africa that was affected very severely by a series of white fly transmitted Gemini viruses that, um, that came into West Africa and, and really um, destroyed tomato production, both um, for local use and regional um, export markets in the mid-2000s. Um, through a USAID-funded project, um, we were able, in very short order, to mobilize existing investments, and I must specifically acknowledge the outstanding work done in the Israeli um, scientific community in this story, because for 20 years in the private sector, resistance to the Gemini viruses that figured in this complex had been pioneered in both the Israeli um, public domain in public sector science and um, private sector science. And so quickly, with support from USAID and global partners, we were able to mobilize resistance that restored production. And you see that in the lower left of this slide, in a series of nine countries in West Africa. This partnership is, exemplifies um, a number of um, strategies we see in, in this day and age looking um, at the kinds of integrated challenges that are the subject of your conference. So my team at Cornell University was called into a partnership with, um, with other U.S. and uh, European scientists with our West African partners in the national agricultural systems, universities, and the international research centers. Um, we launched this project in 2005. Because we were able to mobilize these um, existing investments across science into the particular development challenge, the very next slide showed what um, we saw in the streets of Bamako in the summer of 2007. These are ladies selling beautiful tomatoes in, um, in the street, but you'll notice there are an awful lot of those beautiful tomatoes and, and a lot of women hoping to um, make their livelihood that day. In fact, the next slide shows the canning factory, which, um, due to other influences, including some shifts in EU import policy, um, was unable to process the tomatoes that appeared from our success into the tan cans of tomato paste, which figure prominently in the West African diet and also were, um, were subject to um, or were available for import opportunities. And so the last slide in this series shows these tomatoes, the success in a productivity mode heading into that canal you see in the upper left-hand corner. In fact, we have once again proved the principle that without markets, productivity-focused success um, will in fact um, not lead to the types of benefits we had imagined, not just in terms of tomatoes, but for income and livelihood, for poverty alleviation, and for nutrition that we had hoped to realize. So the next slide um, states the obvious. Of course, there is such a thing as too many tomatoes, and unbalanced abundance can be as much a curse as poverty and undernutrition. So looking forward, an important message from this talk for this conference is for me now, whenever I intervene or am involved in interventions connected to development, focused on food security and health, I look for a portfolio approach that integrates agricultural interventions, nutritional interventions, and financial interventions that will provide the surest gains and the most um, secure management of risk across a set of, um, across essentially the risk landscape that a smallholder may face. Systems thinking is essential. We are managing outputs and outcomes through time. And my point, um, or one, another important point is that simply repurposing our 20th century structures and approaches in the 21st century towards these critical challenges in the face of climate change will certainly be insufficient. And so the next question really is what is the best way forward towards sufficient food systems in better balance? Re next slide suggests a fundamental precept. Research must focus on how to actually deliver the benefits and when tested, whether and what types of benefits actually accrue on the ground, and scaling is always an issue here, and what types of detrimental outcomes are observed. Again, systems thinking is essential, whether the focus is health, productivity, or environment. 
or livelihood. So in contrast to focusing only on maximizing disaggregated components of the system, I believe personally, as an individual researcher, I must hold myself accountable for inputs, outputs, and outcomes of systems in which I'm, I act, and that we as, as research communities and develop communities, development communities must do the same. And we also must recognize that each action, each development intervention we undertake on Earth fundamentally or formally tests a strategy or premise about development and about strategies towards sufficiency, health, and security look forward. I want to put up on the next slide, um, and there are a series of animations that um, you'll need to manage, um, a slide that points out feedbacks for both um, vicious and virtuous cycles on landscape. The blue arrow on this slide signifies a, a cycle we've seen far too often in the 20th century mode, where our demands on landscapes lead to degradation of the very resources we will be depending on in the future. That creates a loss of productivity, um, requiring more, that, it's, that, um, that for various reasons uh, m creates more degradation. We remove more biomass, more from ecosystems, and we see a cycle towards insufficiency, degradation, and, and millions of hectares coming out of productivity over the course of, um, of, of our demands um, towards food security. Above that, there is an illustration of a virtuous cycle. And while my, my focus is health, you will see in this cycle that ultimately shifting our agricultural ecosystems to these virtuous cycles lead to better outcomes for livelihoods, better outcomes for food security, and better health outcomes. And so fundamentally, as a whole community looking at food security from every facet, we are looking to make the shifts illustrated in this slide from the vicious cycles and their collateral human consequences to the virtuous cycles with gains in both economic and health outcomes. So the next slide summarizes this point. Yield is still critically important, but we're operating in a constrained and often degraded systems, and we must formally approach two critical t questions. How can we reverse degradation of agricultural systems at scale and grow income, wealth, and productivity? How can we move from pilots to system systemic approaches to this challenge, and what are technologies and approaches that will actually improve nutritional and health outcomes while we are managing these systems approaches. Finally, it's very clear to any of us who work in this system that we need better ways of full accounting for ecosystem services and fluxes and their human outcomes. So the last few slides just summarize some um, general observations and some concrete recommendations moving forward that we offer to the global community to guide partnership and investments. Clearly, any, um, any consideration of this topic can be framed as it is in the next slide, again, courtesy of a close colleague um, from Cornell University who works for the McKnight Foundation, a foundation that, has, that was um, a partner for me for 10 years in making many of these, in developing many of these insights, that any consideration of nutrition and health occurs in context, and we offer this framing with poverty, with the focus of reducing the trap of poverty and malnutrition as an explicit focus, um, because if it's not, it isn't necessarily a guaranteed outcome of improvements in other domains. Um, we focus in this slide, and there's, again, there's animation to bring forward, um, on more diverse foods to eat, more of the year, more diverse products to sell, more of the year. This begins to address three fundamental parts of food, um, of food security, availability, access, and utilization. And so it's really this slide I, that I will use to summarize my message from this talk to the community looking forward about the importance of working in integrated ways um, towards improved nutrition and health outcomes. The next slide is an illustration of a reflection of this in a strategy called the U.S. 
Feed the Future initiative. This is a, an example of a new type of partnership where our U.S. development agency is partnering with um, the International Agricultural Research System and other major partners with on-the-ground strategies, and the countries are named at the bottom of this slide, that bring forward through the approach of sustainable intensification the collateral benefits across the board. The next slide really summarizes the multifunctionality of the USAID Feed the Future approach with respect to nutrition, livelihoods, and long-term agricultural and economic sustainability. Again, there's some animation that lays out some specific targets in each one of these domains. So the next slide really summarizes, in my view, what needs to be done. Moving from traditional agricultural systems through input-intensive production systems that are diverse, they're tightly managed, taking advantage of, of um, heterogeneity and time and space to meet the nutritional security needs, which will promote health. So we have ecologically intensive um, agricultural input systems that are tightly managed. They're local and highly adapted. And human dimensions are the um, mechanism by which we evaluate their sufficiency. In short, we need to learn how to do more with less, recognizing the imperative for a pro-poor agenda that explicitly manages risk. So this, I'm just going to move into the last summary slides. The next slide suggests a, a practical way forward with this, and that is to say for those of us who have thought about, for example, stress-tolerant crops, this slide offers us a practical way forward. Stress-tolerant crops cover only a portion of the risk landscape, shown by the red curve. Um, where there is no rain, stress-tolerant crops will not provide the means to meet nutritional security. Now, there are other interventions, nutritional interventions and financial interventions that can assure food and nutritional security in the face of crop failure, and that's shown on the left-hand side of this. In, um, in places where we're facing very challenged environmental circumstances, drought-tolerant varieties may offer a critical yield advantage or a critical strategy. And then in areas where there's sufficient rain, we will be looking at other strategies to bring us towards, um, towards better um, and more generally improved human outcomes. So I'm going to close very briefly with two overviews. One, the CGIR system level objectives, which showcase this type of, inter of, of integration and showcase the sharp, the sharp focus on rural poverty, food security, nutrition and health, sustainable management of natural resources. Clearly, this is the agenda of the CGIR. Um, explicitly, and um, you will hear, I'm sure, throughout the conference, calls for partnership from our colleagues within this system towards improved outcomes. But partnership is key. I'm going to just conclude very quickly with a summary of recommendations of which I got to be a part as the U.S. Commissioner. Um, the CJIR, Climate Change, Ag and Food Security Research Theme, commissioned uh, a a study this last year that has resulted, if you look on the next slide, in a framework of recommendations. I don't expect you to um, take a look at all these recommendations in great detail. I'll simply call your attention to recommendation number one. We need to integrate food security and health in, in any discussion of sustainable agriculture um, at the policy level. We need to raise the investment. Recommendation number three, we've been talking about sustainable intensification of agricultural productivity while realizing the dynamics within systems. We need recommendation number four, target populations that are most vulnerable, recognizing that as we shift our agriculture, these populations need special attention. Recommendation number five um, is, is the diet piece. And recommendation number six is the lost and waste piece. And finally, recommendation number seven emphasizes the need for better accounting systems. So with this, I'm going to close just with some concluding remarks. Food and nutritional security and health outcomes must be approached in many ways. Agricultural technologies will remain key, but we'll be working with systems, recognizing any intervention um, is, is a move towards a stabilized um, system that better meets human needs. We'll be focusing on closing the yield gap, sustainably intensifying and diversifying cropping systems. But we understand also 
that the human dimensions and those human outcomes really will be our benchmark targets. And so there's critically important opportunity to innovate connected to nutritional technologies and strategies for nutritional interventions and financial technologies to manage credit and risk. And so with that, I'm going to close my prepared remarks. I will be available on Skype to answer any questions or um, participate in a discussion. And I thank you very much for the opportunity to present these thoughts, um, which I hope have been helpful or will be helpful to both to this session and to the conference organizers and the Israeli science and social science and policy communities looking forward towards these very, very important calls to action um, that we will answer as a global community. Thank you so much for your time and attention and the honor of this invitation.